All right, everyone. In my previous video, we talked about the concept of torque. Comparing rotational motion to linear motion, in linear motion, we had the formula net force equals mass of system times acceleration. Fama! But when we deal with rotation, it's a little bit trickier. When we want to change the rotation of an object, or in other words, create angular acceleration, not only do we have to apply a force, but where that force is applied is going to be important as well. When we look at angular motion and we talk about what we are rotating, the analogous idea from linear motion would be mass. How much mass an object had was going to affect how much inertia that object had and was going to affect how much a net force could accelerate the object. When we're dealing with rotation, we're going to be putting net torques on our objects. And the mass of an object is going to be important as well in determining how much we change the rotation of that object. But it turns out there's a little bit more than mass, just kind of like there was a little bit more than force when we were talking about rotational motion. To demonstrate this idea, I'm bringing my incredibly awesome son, Ben Schramm. Here's Ben Schramm, freshman at Prospect High School. Right now, he's taking an object and continuously changing the rotation of the object. When it reaches one of the extreme points, say when the left side is all the way down, it stops its rotation. Then he increases the rotation in a clockwise manner before beginning to slow down the rotation until the point reaches its uppermost until the stick reaches its uppermost point on your left. He then begins the process again by spinning the the pole in the opposite direction. Notice that there's two five pound weights on each side of his hand right now as he rotates this object. Ben, difficult or hard? Kind of hard. That's not what you're supposed to say. Oh, it's hard to hold it out. Oh, okay. Well, he's not as muscular as his dad, but what are you going to do? Now Ben's holding a bar that is exactly the same mass as before, but we have moved the weights so that they're on the edge of the, the rod. Now Ben is going to attempt to rotate the rod just like he was before. Ready, Ben? Yeah. Okay, go. How easy is it to slow it down compared to before? It's not that hard, but it's harder. It's harder? How easy is it to speed it up compared to before? Harder. Harder? Okay. So do you have to put more force to do it? Yeah. Okay. Good job, Ben. Thanks, Steve. Say bye to everybody, Ben. Bye. Check out those shoes. He totally overpaid for them. So the key lesson here is that even though the object had the exact same mass, moving the masses further out affected how easy it was to change the rotation of the object. And the idea here is when we talk about inertia and rotation, not only do we have to take into account the mass of the object we're rotating, but we have to take into account where that mass is located. And we're going to do that with a variable called rotational inertia, which I'll talk about in my next video.